what does this mean? This is HR's capability on how it can enlighten and how it can um, facilitate the de further development in technology uh, space. So you see here, you have uh, the light tower, the lighthouse. So the lighthouse, I consider this to be HR. So the lighthouse is really beaming. Lighthouse here is, is being used as a beacon for navigation purposes for people who have a bit of knowledge on how things work in the sea. So you have a beacon and a beacon is uh, shooting a light to our te uh, technology. But you see there are people and their organizations, but people are enabling organizations to navigate through the uncharted waters. So below you see it's uncharted water, which is uncontrolled. So it's, it's, it's the world we are living. You, have, you must have heard yesterday the big news in the US was a congressional, congressional hearing for the open AI CEO being questioned on what further will AI do. We have seen already the, the chat uh, GPT, the role it is taking now. You, you don't need a secretary if you're having uh, online meetings. So secretaries are no longer needed for, take, uh, for taking notice. So that means how can we control this going further? Back to where I was taking how, how HR is evolving. Toward the 90s, then we saw human resources management coming in, which I've seen the sentiment, and it's the feeling that most of you, uh, most of speakers were really feeling, that HR is still uh, basically doing recruitment, development, and welfare management. That was in 90s, uh, which evolved from the scientific evolution, where they were doing really analysis, saying like, what are the inputs and output? We saw the, uh, for those who did a, a bit of academic on this, this were the Freddie Taylor's era, where they were really saying, uh, trying to show, uh, doing the test, they were experimenting people at work and by doing some scientific calculations and it didn't work. That's why it gave birth to human resource management in the 90s. But then coming to mid uh, 2000, so in the mid 2000s, then we had the HRBP model coming in. So this is where we had um, the coming up of HR business partners. So now HR, other than really uh, focusing on the administrative roles, it had moved into being part, the core of the business. So this is where you had HR moving from largely tactical and administrative uh, functions to more a role focusing on creating value uh, to the businesses. So you can see the evolution coming from the mid-2000s uh, mid and moving to today. It has been too fast. And basically it's too fast because it is facilitated with the technology. So technology is helping HR evolving, and while HR is also supporting HR, uh, uh, technology to move further. So today, where do we see HR? We see HR in three fronts. We see HR as a change agent. And I'll give a bit of uh, expression on change agent. How, how does it work in change agent? Um, in the year 2020, Barclays, UK introduced something called like uh, a surveillance. Uh, it was called the employee surveillance. So it was a, soft, a surveillance software that was installed uh, in staff laptops. It was meant to track movement, ensuring uh, like at what time should staff be like how how long does staff spend time on a, on their computers? How long are they off? Are they on lunch break? Are they on short uh, any other sort of breaks? And okay, yes. Here, here it was. So people has intervened for technology to work. Thank you. So what happened with Barclays, then this stuff, they felt like they were too being micromanaged because, and the, one of the employee uh, acted as a whistleblower, as a whistleblower, saying like he felt his privacy was being uh, compromised because there are an issue of data privacy because if you can monitor all my activities on my laptop because probably I do more what is expected so why would you do that so when it went to the news immediately they pulled it back so it fell it used to like it, it had a big name called Big Brother surveillance uh, software if this would have been done with a proper HR engagement this would never have happened before so here the technologist felt like uh, we'll go on our own and we'll do this because we want to measure people's effectiveness, which was done in a wrong way. So that's where HR works as a change agent. But HR also works as a value creator, creating value. We're talking about business growth, we're talking about customer experience, we're talking about innovation. All these are coming through people. But also HR are talent experts. They are easy to map where people are, 
what do I need? How do I create uh, a, a, a bench which is stronger to, to sustain the business? Talking about succession planning, talking about uh, grooming the incoming generation, talking about harmonizing generation. You, ha you have the one generation and the other. So today, the HR function is really revolutionizing the people, the process. The key is how do we want to ensure we have proper efficiency, but agility, having real-time data uh, for decision making. Where are we heading as HR? A future ready. We leverage on technology, data, and analytics. So we're talking about AI. It's really be talking about a, uh, HR. We're talking about augmented reality, where we're having HR interviewing people in person while they are miles away. Talking about virtual reality. How do you do the onboarding? How do you do the inductions? How do you do, do the training with someone who is in Trinidad and you're in Zanzibar, but like you're sitting on the same room? HR is taking charge of that. But what is the HR's role in harmonization, like in harmonizing the digital transformation? I say I prefer using pictorial presentation. So we know the maestro, for those who like classic music like me, the maestro role is composing music by the compose, but also a conductor, but also a teacher. So HR's role now is of a composer, maestro, and a teacher. Just how you see the choir, the choir leader. When you say uh, you should stop, yes, you should stop. When you say your voices should go up, and they should go up. And how does this work? HR, a culture expert. You bring whatever technology you have, you bring the best of world strategies you have, strategies you know, if your culture is wrong, it will never, you will never take off. But who will make this possible? These are HR who will really prepare the fatty land for your father's success, whether in technology or the best of the art strategy that you know. One of the gurus in HR, Peter Drucker, once said in one analogy that for the HR manager, is the conductor of symphony orchestra through whose effort, vision, and leadership individual instrumental parts as so much noise to themselves became a living whole music. You have all the instruments, but the essence all you do is creating music. So the HR in digital transformation is both the composer, but also a conductor. Previously, you used to be HR where conductors. Bring the rules, we'll implement the rules. You come to work eight to five. If you, you leave an hour before, I punish you. But HR now are preparing these people, giving them flex, flexible working arrangement. If you want to work from home, you want to work for your own time. All we need is deliverables. A bit of testimony on this. Of recent, I'm hiring roles which are, uh, were not existing four years ago. I'm hiring data architects at NMB. I'm hiring data an, uh, scientists, data engineers, um, enterprise architects, and I have one of the uh, software developers with me here. Frank, you can just wave your hand. So he has one of the biggest team that we have. This role was not in existence four years ago. So once you have uh, software developers, you need enterprise architects to help you really conceptualizing the business, coming up with prototypes of what sort of a product or solution you're looking for. Once you have them, then there's a cyber threat. You need, you need cyber specialists, cyber security to oversee and ensure that the, your fire, firewalls and all your security mechanisms are really working well. We're a bank. You have seen recently in one of the neighboring countries, someone employed himself, got into the system, and he, he even got a salary. He even created uh, a feature constituency that didn't exist. So you need to have proper cyber specialist people to help you navigate through this. Who does this? It's HR. Technologies people would really forget, like they feel like they, they come from somewhere. And all these are coming from proper planning. How do strategic roles in HR digital of transformation? What is the strategic role? So you have the job redesigning. I've just mentioned, we, we never had enterprise architect role four years ago at NMB. We never had data engineer role four years ago, but we now have it. We have data engineers, data scientists, and the architect. How do you do this? You need to do job design. You need to do uh, assessment, uh, the pain benefits for that. But once you bring this, they, come, they are coming with their own needs. We can't, we are not talking about salary band anymore. You're talking about how much the value I'm creating in that, that's how I need to be paid. So it's a child who would go there and you really uh, come up with perks and pegs to make sure that these are people you, not only you attract them, but also you keep them once they're in. Change agent, I can't say more, I've spoken about it, but how do you identify talents from where they are 
How do you groom talents? How do you ensure there's a Christian for fit for purpose and fit for growth in your organization? That's where you need HR to come and support. HR are the ones who would conduct, are conducting gap analysis in different areas, like in different roles and specialties which are needed. How do you leverage with the current workforce that, that you're having and you can't lay off them, you need them to really give you value going forward. You really need to do uh, workforce planning analysis and reskilling because mostly these are the very same people that you're having and you wouldn't want really to be seen as a bad employer letting people go. How do you reward and recognize people are giving, who are creating value to you? But how is HR transforming technologies and their impact? We have data analytics tool. We're using HR predictive data analysis really to predict retention like, like uh, from onboarding. If your onboarding is wrong, like statistics, like for instance in US last year, say 33% of staff who left, basically they cited the reason for leaving was poor onboarding system. You need to have HR predictive analytics tools to help you navigate through this. I have very few minutes to remain here. Software and information system, how do you reach? We are almost 4,000 staff across the country, but how do you ensure employer getting proper experience from where they are sitting, rather than them uh, walking to an HR and mention what they need? It has to be, like experience has to be taken very, very close to, uh, to these staff. Latest digital platforms, we, for instance, we have NMB Innovation Lab, Sandbox and Data Centers. These are really to make employee experience better. Engagement, we're do, doing gamification. Training is evolving, we're not in, in class training. It has to be fun, it has to be entertaining. The incoming generation, they really want to have something that is engaging. Well, they want to engage while they're sitting alone. Because they start by being given phone by parents at home. So how do you do that? Come with these gamifications. Make, make training fun. And that's how we are coming up with the kind of these sort of uh, tools like Kahoot, where you're doing like in, in, while you're building your teams. So businesses with notable HR and digital transformation, uh, we have cited, we're at NMB. Big, uh, given our size, uh, we have done a lot of services to be on self-service mode. Like, so we have user interface for staff where they are. They can do a lot, a lot of uh, what uh, they would have usually called someone to, uh, to help uh, sort themselves from where they are. But we see like uh, organizations like uh, Safaricom, we see like they launch a second wave they call the uh, 29 squad. And this is our extreme. It, they brought it as a challenge, one more skill. Every staff had to, re, uh, had to learn one more skill, and this skill has to be digital related. And uh, their success rate was at 92%. So wouldn't this be a challenge uh, for the rest to learn this? LinkedIn is 100% digital. It's all their services and professionals, you can get to almost everyone. I wouldn't go for those. Let me go for the last one. HR is a bridge. How do we cultivate the future ready workforce? Identify digital skills and competence in your pleas. Uh -huh. Develop a comprehensive digital learning strategy as an organization and embrace agile workforce. Not the principles, not the do's and the don'ts. You emphasize on change management and communication, but all this can only be possible if you foster diverse and inclusive workforce. Thank you.